Hello everyone, welcome back to my She Pierce My Voice Ministries. On today, I will be having a lesson that's coming from Psalms 75, 6 through 7. And my lesson today is going to be talking about promotion. Promotion. But before I get started, I wanted to talk a bit about spiritual prostitution. And that goes with this lesson, spiritual prostitution. And here's why. Because right now in the churches today, we'll do anything for a promotion. We'll do anything for leadership, for man to promote us. And spiritual prostitution is when you're willing to do anything, you're willing to give of yourself, you're willing to do whatever it takes for a human person to lift you up in a certain position so you can seem important and seem above other people. Now in Psalms 75, five, 75, six and seven, the word of God says, for promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west, nor from the south, but God, is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. So what this is saying is that God is the one that do the promoting. God is the judge. And the word of God says he the one that set one up and put one down. He the one that's going to promote you. He the one that's going to tell you, okay, I'm going to call you in and I'm calling you to be an evangelist, or I'm calling you to be a pastor, or I'm calling you to be a prophet. That does not come from people. That does not come from leadership. That comes from the Lord, because the scripture says right here, but God is the judge. And if we go to, in Exodus, when God was bringing the Israelites out of Egypt, he told Moses to go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And God is using his vessels to get on YouTube to wherever it is that God's sending them to, to tell leadership, to tell the people inside of these churches that's running these churches, let my people go. In Exodus 8 and 1, and the Lord spoke unto Moses, go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, thus says the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me. And God is saying that right now today, let my people go that they may serve me. And a lot of people is sitting inside of these churches, serving leadership and not serving the Lord. And this is what this lesson is about. Spiritual prostitution, because we willing to do anything, no matter what we willing to prostitute ourselves, the leadership, just so we can get a position. We willing to clean. We willing to give all our money. We willing to, uh, uh, sacrifice our families and walk away from our families. We barely be at home doing what we're supposed to do at home. We willing to do anything, deceive, lie, cheat. We willing to do all of that just so we can get a position inside of the church. And if you willing to do all of this just to get a position inside of the church, then that means that God didn't call you. Because when the Lord calls you, you don't have to prostitute yourself to nobody in order for the Lord to, to use you. And this is what we do inside of these churches. We prostitute ourselves. We'll do anything, give a large amount of money. Anything to be promoted when the Bible clearly says right here in Psalm 75, 6 and 7, that promotion comes from the Lord. The Bible says that God is the judge. Now, if we go to Acts chapter 13, I have further proof that promotion does not come from leadership. I have further proof that promotion comes from the Lord. 
in Acts 13, 1 through 5. I'm going to read it. Now, now, there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simon that was called Niger and Lucius and Cyrene and, Ma and Manon, which had been brought up with Herod, Tetra, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas, and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Now let's read that again. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas, and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. The Holy Ghost told these men, Separate me, Barnabas, and saw for the work whereunto I have called them. It didn't say that these men decided why they was fasting and praying, that they just decided, well, I'm just going to elevate these two people. The word of God said the Holy Ghost told them why they was fasting and ministering to the Lord to set Barnabas and Saul aside for the work that he called them to do, not the people. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Obedience obedience they was obedient to the holy ghost when the holy ghost told these men to set barnabas and saul aside that's exactly what they did they didn't sit back and say well i'm gonna set them aside when i get ready to set them aside to do the work or i want to get this a little bit more out of them see what how much more you can gain from this person before you send them off to do what god called them to do no the word of god says and when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. They did what the Holy Ghost told them to do because these men was following the Holy Ghost. So they be so so being sent forth by the Holy Ghost departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they they sailed to Cyprus. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, they were sent forth by the Holy Ghost. They was not sent forth by leadership. They were sent forth by the Holy Ghost. And when they were at Salmis, they preached the word of God in the synagogue of the Jews. And they had also John to their minister. So they went after the Holy Ghost called them. And they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they had also John to their minister. So when the Holy Ghost told them to set them apart, he said, set them apart for the work that I called them to do. And then when we get in verse five, you see that they was preaching the word of God in the synagogues, in the churches. But we're not letting people do that in the churches. We decide who going to get up and preach the word of God. Whether the Lord then gave somebody a word or not. Whether the Lord called somebody to do a work or not. We sit and decide who, when, and where if we're going to let this person do the work that God called them to do. And that's why right now today the Lord says, let my people go that they may serve me. Let my people go. Why is you holding the people hostage? That's just like the last lesson the Lord gave me to do when he was talking about fishers. He told them how to fish, when to fish, where to fish. And then he told them, bring me some of the fish. Bring the fish that you have caught. Now we learn that their promotion comes from the Lord. It don't come from people. Promotion comes from the Lord. This is what the word of God is saying. Promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. That means he can sit you down and he can put you up. And when the Lord do that, when God does that, nobody can change that. Nobody can tell God where you made a mistake because you chose to use this person. He can use whoever he want to use and there's nothing that we can do or say about it. Because God is the judge. He the one going to decide who going to 
be promoted to be a prophet and who's not. He the one going to decide who going to be leadership of this certain ministry and who not. God is the one that decides that, not people. So now that we see that the Holy Ghost used these men to set Barnabas and Paul aside, the Holy Ghost told them to set these men apart. They didn't decide that they was going to set them. They didn't know that these men had calls on their lives outside the Holy Ghost. This knowledge came from the Holy Ghost. They was vessels that the Holy Ghost used to, to promote these men and send them off to do the work that the Holy Ghost, that God had called them to do. That God created these men to do. Now, if we go to Exodus 7 and 5, the word of God says, And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. You're going to know that the Lord, that God is the judge when he stretched forth his hand. Because he's saying, let my people go. Now, back then, they experienced plagues. They, re they experienced plagues. You know why? Because in Exodus 7 and 14, Pharaoh's heart was hardened. He refused to let the people go. Don't be like Pharaoh and refuse to let God's people go, that they may come out of these four walls and serve him. Don't start being disobedient. Because back then, they experienced water turned into blood. They experienced frogs. They experienced... Um, Lice, they experienced um, flies, they experienced all the cattle of Egypt died, they experienced boils, and so on. They experienced all of these plagues in Egypt. Why? Because they refused to let the people go to serve the Lord. And that's what we're doing in these churches right now today. we holding the people hostage and we refusing to let them go and serve the Lord. And the sad thing about it is that God is going to have to stretch forth his hand on some of these churches in order for them to learn because they won't let the people go. They feel like what they're doing is right. We're not following the Holy Ghost anymore. We're doing what we want to do. We're not following the Holy Ghost. We're not doing what thus says the Lord. We're doing what we want to do. We feel like we bought it. We feel like we put the money up for it. So I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm running this church the way I want to run it. You're not following the Holy Ghost. You're not letting the Lord have a dominion over that church. You done took over that church. And that's what this lesson is about. This is the second time the Lord done sent me on here about the people. Let his people go. These are God. We, we're God's people. We don't own each other. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The earth is the Lord's. Everything on this earth belongs to the Lord. We don't have ownership of nothing on this earth. Nothing. Let's go to Psalms. We're going to go to Psalms because I like to read the word of God. Psalms 24 and 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. So this is letting us know that divine ownership of this earth and everything that belongs here is the Lord's. The Lord have ownership of the earth and the fullness thereof. So why is we trying to hold people hostage inside of these church buildings? And then not only that, the you, you give power to leadership to treat you this way. Because we'll do anything to be promoted. We'll do anything. We'll get our whole check, give our whole check to the pastor. What you want me to do, pastor? What can I do for you, pastor? Going in there telling the pastor stuff on people. Whatever you can do. What, um, trying to badmouth people behind closed doors. Trying to be the, the, the pastor's pet. Whatever it takes for you to get that promotion, you willing to do it. Deceive, cheat, lie, hurt people, defame people. 
we do these things in the church just to get a position. When you don't even have to do that because the Bible clearly says that promotion comes from the Lord, that God is the judge. So if you if you feel like God is promoting you to a position, then why don't we just go to the Lord and ask the Lord, is he promoting us to is he promoting us to this position? Why is you going to leadership? And I know that I know what I'm talking about because I've done it. We go to leadership and then we take their advice and God that clearly told us, I called you to do this. But we go to leadership anyway. We, we, we don't want to hear what thus says the Lord. We don't want to follow the Lord. We want that tangible answer. Well, okay, we want people to see us as being promoted. We If people don't promote us, then it's not important. But if God do it, okay, does God work behind the scenes? If I call you to do it, then I'm going I'm to take you to it. But we, that ain't the way we want to do We want to stand in front of the church and get on the pulpit, and we want the pastor to get up there and say, yeah, I'm promoting this person to be a prophet, or I'm promoting this person to be an evangelist, or I'm promoting this person to be so they can get the, the praises of the people that's sitting down in the pews. That's why we want it done that way. We don't want to. We don't want to get in our closet and pray, and then hear what the Holy Ghost has to say and what the Lord is telling us off in prayer behind closed doors in, in our personal space. We don't want to accept it that way. We want our promotion to come from leadership out in public, so people can see us as being important. High missionary, high evangelist, high prophet, high apostle, high pastor. That's what we want from the people. We want that extra behind our name. We can't just take the Lord's word for it when he say, well, I want you to get on and I want you to teach and I want you to do or I want you to go out and evangelize or I want to call you to lead a ministry. We can't just take the word to take the Lord's word for it. We want to be seen out in public. And that's why we stuck right in these churches right now today, because we scared to walk away from these promotions and these positions that came from people and didn't come from the Lord. There's no anointing behind it, nothing. We just standing on the pulpit teaching and, 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 and bringing the word of God and God ain't told you to do nothing. Because we want to take the word for it from people, then sit back and wait on God to tell us what he want us to do. Because when God calls you to do it, it's not going to be easy. You just get a chance to sit on the pulpit and, and get to start preaching. You, it's it's, it's going to be a process to get there. When he calls you, it's a process to get to where he wants you to be. It's not an overnight thing. You still have a process to go to to get where God calling you to be. It's not, okay, I'm calling you to be an evangelist, sit on the pulpit, now you ready to go. Uh-uh, it don't work like that because I'm a living witness to that. It don't work like that. When he called you to do something, it's some it's going to be some pressure that's coming with that. Some growth got to come with that. Some things got to be cut off that's coming with that. Some holiness is coming behind that. Some tears, some pain is coming behind that calling. It's not I'm getting on the pulpit and now I get to preach a fiery sermon and I made it to the top and I'm seen as important. Nope, it don't work like that. It's a process. You getting on that potter's wheel when God call you for, for when he when he call you to do a position, get ready for the potter's wheel. Cause he finna start smoothing stuff out. And he getting ready to start cutting stuff off. Get ready to start crying. Get ready to start being frustrated. Get ready to start feeling like you losing your mind. Cause that's what comes when God call you to do the work, uh, to do his work. It's some growth got to come behind that. Because we still have attitude problems. We still have pride. We still tell a person off in a minute as soon as they make us mad. We still cuss when we get angry. We still ready to fight. All of these things have to be dealt with. And it's not an overnight process. Yes, God will call you, but he still it's some work that have to be done behind that call. So you don't just get called, get on the on, on the pulpit, and now you're ready to go. Uh-uh, that, that's that promotion that calls for people. That, that, that's people promotion right there. But when your promotion comes from the Lord, it's some tears and sweat that's coming behind that promotion. Yes, it's some tears and sweat that's coming behind that. It's not a, 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 a ooh, I'm so excited, and ooh, you're you, you going to hurt. Because growth hurt. Some things have to be took out and the right things have to be put in. 
That's just like when you cooking your favorite dish. You know the ingredients that you want to use and you know the certain seasonings, butter, how much sugar, how much um, extract, how much um, uh, uh, seasoning salt, accent, whatever you need in that in that particular dish that you make and you know your ingredients and what you need. And that's just like when the Lord call us. He know everything that needs to be put in and he knows everything that has to be taken out. And that's why I'm telling you from experience, you don't just get promoted and then now you fiery ready to go. It's a process to get there. All of those bad impurities got to be taken out. And then he put that, them accents in. That accent gives you a full flavor. The flavors have to be put in in order for you to get to where he wants you to be. In order for you to handle what it is that he called you to do. And no, you're not, there's no perfection in it. All you can do is trust in the Lord to help you one day at a time. There is no being perfect. The only person that was perfect that walked this earth was Jesus. We not perfect. We never will be perfect. You going to make mistakes. You going to mess up. I'm a living witness to tell you. Every day it's a struggle. When you really trying to do what's right. It's not no peaches and cream. So if you feel like that you promoted and you got sat on the pulpit and now you think you're ready to go, you just been deceived. Because if God calls you to do some work, it's going to be some growth that has to come behind that. Some things he has to prepare you for. He's going to call you for it, but you have to be prepared for it too. It's preparation to get there. On the way. All the way through. You never done being pre you're never done being prepped for. It. This is a a life this is a lifetime uh getting ready. It's not like, okay, the Lord going to work for me for, with me for six months and then I'm ready to go, mm-mm. You're going to be, it's a process all the way to the end. Every day you're going to be pressed to do something better. Every day you're going to be pressed to stop doing this. Every day you're going to be pressed, you need to do that. This is an everyday process when you get called to do the work of the Lord. So God is saying, Free the people so they can serve me. Because sitting in the churches on the pulpit every Sunday, nobody is growing. Nobody is doing the work. Nobody is out winning souls because we too busy getting shot going to the church on Sunday and sitting in the churches. It's too many people that's out here on the streets that's hungry that can use a hamburger, a cold soda. But we give everything we have in the offering box. And then we see a person standing on the street homeless and ask us for 50 cents and we won't even give them 50 cents. No, I'm taking this and put this in the offering box. That's helping the Lord too because he said when you done it unto them, you done it unto me. So if you give somebody a, a $5 to get them a hamburger, a fry, and a cold drink, you just done that for the Lord. That's still offering. You still giving of yourself when you helping people that way too. You don't have to take every dime and put it in an offering box. It's people out here that really need help. And I'm not saying just let people use you and things. The Lord, the Lord will show you who to help and who not to help. If you follow him, he'll show you when to give and when not to give. So you won't have to worry about getting hurt or being used. And, but if we jump ahead of him and do it our way, and then if you get used, then you did that to yourself because you jumped ahead of the Lord. It's more work to be done than sitting inside of four walls every Sunday. That's why there's so many hurting souls out here because we're not working as saints. We too busy sitting in the churches on the pews. And I just got to tell the truth. We sitting in the churches on the pews with our cute shoes on, our sharp outfit, our nice hairstyle. And then there's people out here that's walking up and down the street on Sunday on drugs, don't know if they coming or going, need to be ministered to, could use a sandwich, could use a cold drink, but we sitting inside the four walls. And I'm guilty of it too because I've done it for many years. Sitting inside the church and didn't have no outreach about myself at all. All I want to do is go to church, teach Sunday school, sit on the front row, and then I'm a missionary. And then that was my lifestyle. 
I wasn't really serving the Lord. I wasn't doing anything to help anybody. I was helping myself. And we have to get on here and tell the truth. Don't get on here and try to make yourself seem like you perfect and you got it together and everything. No, because I was one of the main ones that was sitting on the front row. I was called to be a missionary. I was teaching Sunday school and I didn't do and I had and I didn't outreach. I didn't help nobody. All my tithes and offering went to the church. This is what I was doing. I'm talking about me. I'm not talking about nobody else. I'm talking about Monique. This is what Monique was doing. And that's why the Lord sent me on here because I can talk about it because I did it. Everything was about the church. It wasn't nothing about the Lord or hurting souls that's out here in the streets. It was all about Monique and the church. And if we doing that, we need to ask God for repentance and we need to ask God to help us to do better. And that's why I wanted to come on here and talk about spiritual prostitution. Because that's what we're doing in these churches. We prostitute ourselves for positions. We'll do anything to get on that pulpit to be seen important in front of the people that's sitting on them pews. And I know I'm saying this right. And prostitution is when you're willing to, you will do anything in, in, in order for, for in exchange for something. And that's what we're doing. Oh, pastor, I do this. I do that. You see me doing this. You see me doing that. And then exchange, you get it. And then ex in exchange, you get a position. I made it. That's how you feel. I made it. But where's your relationship at with the Lord? What is you doing for the Lord? You made it for yourself. And that's not going to guarantee you no relationship. That's not guaranteeing you nothing with the Lord. Just because you prostituted yourself in the church for a position. Anybody can get on there and teach. The devil can get, 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 bring the word of God. We saw that in Matthew when Jesus was being tempted, when he tempted Jesus. So that don't mean nothing because you know a scripture and you can talk about a scripture. If your, it, it, What count is that if we doing all we can to live holy? And as I said before, I'm definitely not perfect. I'm just a vessel that the Lord chose to use. And I'm still, just like everybody else, I'm doing all I can to try to live holy. I make mistakes. I fall. I get angry sometimes and mess up. But I pick myself up and I keep on going. I'm not going to let the devil make me feel like that I done messed up too bad and that I don't have another chance. No. When I mess up and I fall, I'm going to pray, ask God to forgive me. And I pick myself up and I keep going another day. Because I do mess up. I do get angry. Sometimes I may say something I don't have no business. But I know how to ask God to forgive me. I get on my knees and let the Lord know. And I confess my sins. First John 1 and 9. I confess them. And then I keep on moving. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up on my relationship with the Lord. It don't matter what nobody think about me or how they feel. Only thing that counts is that if, if God see me right in his eyes and he see that I'm trying and he know that I'm trying. It don't matter what other people think or feel. And that's the way we have to live. We got to stop worrying about how people think or feel about us all the time. Because people going to always have their opinion. But what we have to do is ask God, am I right in your eyes, Lord? Am I, am I doing things that's pleasing you in your sight, Lord? Not people, but in the Lord's sight. Because if we live our lives based on how people judge us, we're going to be very unhappy. We're going to be miserable. We are never, we are never make it. Because you can't please people. You cannot please somebody else's flesh. So God is saying, let my people go that they may serve me. We need to get out of ourselves and let the Lord have his way. And that's what we done done. We done took, we done took completely over these churches. It is only a remnant that's still letting the Holy Ghost come in and have his way. But most of these churches, the people done took over it. And they and the leadership done took over it. And the people serving leadership. And I'm just going to tell it just like it is. Because that's what it is. The leadership done took over. And the people serving leadership. They think they serving the Lord. But they really not. They serving leadership. 
You think when you um worshiping these your leadership and doing all this for leadership that you serving the Lord? No, you're not. No, you're not. God didn't tell you to be serving water and juice and cakes and stuff all the time. He said, be holy. And that's why we get hurt in these churches the way we do. That's where church hurt come from. Because we be too busy serving the people, serving leadership, and we don't serve God. Then when we get hurt, we walk away from the church and we don't want to have nothing to do with the Lord. And he didn't even have nothing to do with it. You chose to serve these people. You chose to give your all in all to the people. God never told us to do that. He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. He didn't say trust in people. The word of God says, serve the Lord with gladness. Not serve your leadership with gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. And that's why we get hurt in the churches. That's where church hurt come from. I experienced that too. Because we so busy serving the leadership and we not serving God. When we come together inside these churches, it's supposed to be a fellowship. We fellowshipping together to give God the glory, not to serve leadership. From leadership down to the baby, everybody that fellowship and come together, we supposed to be giving God the glory. Don't nobody supposed to be standing above more important than nobody else because God look at us all the same. He do use people, but he love us all the same. Nobody is bigger than the next person. So when we come together in these fellowships, we supposed to be all of us on one accord serving the Lord. Just like on the day of Pentecost, they said they was all on one accord. It wasn't some was over here more important then we had a click over here. We had five or six of them over there. No, the word of God said they was on one accord when the Holy, when the Holy Ghost came. They was all praying as one. Not some people get to pray, some don't and all that. Everybody should be praying inside the church. Some people don't even get to pray inside the church. They have to, the only, the, uh, the ones that sit on the pulpit get a chance to pray. You can call a child out the audience to pray. Everybody should be praying. Not only certain people in the churches, everybody's supposed to be praying. The word of God said, pray without ceasing. It didn't say only leadership and ministers staff, and ministers, uh, staff pray. Everybody's supposed to be praying. But inside the churches, only certain people get to pray. And then when they do pray, they feel lifted up because and I get to get on the pulpit and pray. So what? Everybody's supposed to be praying, not certain people. And that's why the Lord, he tired of it now. That's why people not really getting saved right now today, because we too busy serving leadership instead of serving the Lord. And that is what my lesson was about today. Promotion comes neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south, but God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. And if you think that what I'm saying is wrong, go to Psalm 75, verse 6 and 7, and read it for yourself. God bless you, and I'll see you again next time.